welcome back. As you can see, I swept the floor, cleaned up a bit in here, because this marks the end of this rust repair and the start of something else. Um, as I've been talking about earlier, I wanted to do redo this entire electrical system because this is just a lot of plugs and loose ends and wire connections done with tape and all kinds of crap. Um, and all this looking pretty and none rusty. Um, I thought, why not take all this stuff off that I put on here to get the measurements right and then start on the new uh, chapter of this build. Um, it's still going to be painted. It's still in the paint prep process. Um, this just, yeah, this just needs to be done. Um, if I want a reliable car that I can drive and enjoy some more, instead of having all these, as I call them, gremlins coming up along uh, all the time, it needs to be done um, from the ground up. So I am rebuilding the entire electrical system of the car, uh, pretty much pulling all the old uh, electrics out, um, building a new supply, uh, trigger everything for the fuel pump, uh, which by the way is switched to uh, electronic fuel pump. Normally this runs off a mechanical fuel pump somewhere down here. Um, this engine has a, a third cam inside that runs for a mechanical fuel pump. All that have been torn out um, at some point. So I'm running, a, as I said, electrical fuel pump. I'm going to be redoing all this electrical setup for the starter, um, ignition system, front lights, all that goodies. Also, I am going to be swapping out the old alternator, which I think on this one charged about 30, 25, 30 amps, to a new modern uh, one, which which has a built-in regulator and will charge about, I don't know, 80 amps, something like that. So uh, I need to beef up the entire uh, electrical system to accommodate that and um, just get all this bird's nest sorted out. So, yeah. Let's get to it, get all this stuff off, and start making some brackets for the new alternator. Okay, this is what I'm gonna be using. This is a... 9094 Toyota uh, Carina, it's called here in Denmark and Europe, uh, alternator, which is an 80 amp unit. Um, it's pretty common and cheap. It has, it comes with this pulley, uh, this V flange for, um, for the type of belt that we're going to be running on the car. Anyways, so um, that's a good starting point, so we don't have to do anything to this. We do need to order some plugs to start making this um, the new harness. This has built-in regulator and these are commonly available. So if they blow, you can buy a new one for, I think it's about a hundred bucks, something like that. Um, we are going to be running um, the power lead of this in um, conjunction with the power lead, uh, the main lead from the battery in the, in the boot, all the way up here and the starter which is going to be all three connected and from there uh, chained into the main harness. So we have all the main um, power con consumers and makers connected by the pretty, pretty big cables. And then we kind of go down in size as we go in the car. And uh, we're going to be connecting up with fuses, a fuse box, a relay box, all kinds of goodies. Um, basically a new harness. So this thing here, will sit in the place of the original one which is somewhere down here and the bracket doesn't fit you can machine it down if you want to to make it fit you can machine uh, the alternator down just a bit but i i think this will make it a a bit weaker i don't want that because this is not the most sturdy uh, aluminum this is made of so 
in order to make this fit, I'm going to be remaking a, another bracket um, to have it in the exact position uh, where we need it. Also to be able to uh, to adjust it and to um, to put tension on the belt. When that's done, I think I'm going to take this apart um, to find the last pieces I want to add to the engine bay. Um, when that's done, I think we need to paint it. Um, get everything prepped, paint it, um, and then get everything back and start doing the harness. Once the harness is done, we can move on to the rest of the car. We can basically close off the bay um, and that will be, yeah, done, I hope, at some point. Yeah, let's see. This is what I ended up with. I think this is the bracket that will mimic the strength and the position of the original one the best. Um, it weighs a hell of a lot less because this is cast and it's I think going to be just as strong. Um, I see a lot of guys just doing a bracket that just you know holds one of these tabs. The entire alternator can just wiggle around until the belt snaps so that's that's really not gonna be, uh, yeah, useful. So this is, um, as I said, what I'm gonna be running. Um, also, this this accommodates this little uh, sleeve that's bushing that's been pushed in here, because when you tighten these bolts and you tighten the front one, this is intended to let the sleeve run a bit through and go in and crush or contact with this and hold it into place. Also, this is just actually a pivot point. So this is where you just lock it down. The actual adjustment of the tension of the belt is going to be done up top. So this just needs the strength to not flex and to keep this in line and in place. So this is going to be, this is going to be fine for that job. So let's uh, glue it together and uh, try fitting it on the car. Okay, decision time. I'm going to get rid of a lot of stuff in the engine bay to like clean it up a bit. And ba -da -ba -da -ba. battery tray support, all that crap gone. Uh, ignition coil being moved from here to down here. And this washer bottle was put here when I got the car. Um, I kind of wondered why, because that was like. It was not the oddest of places, but you couldn't really reach anything behind it. So I have seen some photos of engine base and eh, get on there. It's supposed to sit up there. That's all good and fun, but I am going to be running um, aluminum overflow tank on this side, aluminum catch thing on this side. So instead of running this, I think I'm gonna be doing this instead. Down here. Oh look, of course the base is gonna get painted and stuff, so it's gonna stick out and not just like hide. But I think this is going to be more fitting for the look of the engine bay. Also clean this up so it's not gonna you know just stand out like a Thor's sore thumb, sorry, up there. 
and a lot of brackets like this one was made for the uh, this is originally a push rod uh, type um, throttle control this has been converted to some sort of a pull cable which goes up here and onto this where the uh, push rod system goes from here into the throttle uh, pedal so this can be made a little nicer than this very heavy duty thing here so I'm gonna be re you know reshaping this I think I'm gonna be removing these guys as I want to as I said clean it up a bit and this is gonna go somewhere I don't even know if this is the original one just get off there oh. rage yeah let's just smack it yeah there you go it does say made in Japan and some denso stuff well there's a chance this is the original Toyota one this is undoubtedly the original one because they look pretty sturdy and good okay this is gonna be safe for later and I'm just gonna be mocking this thing up then wrap smack right in there and when that's done and the bracket for the um, the catch can and the overflow tank it's time to paint the bay always something Well, I think I made a judgment error uh, making the brackets for this overflow tank. I wanted it to be mounted like I originally had but before. It was with this big mount just put on top here. Just uh, I just wanted to like get it on and go out and drive. And this was kind of okay because the flex from a quart of uh, coolant on this bracket on this piece would just like have given a slight vibration to this front one no biggie but putting it on down here as i wanted to do now with this small bracket i think uh, driving around like this with this filled with the coolant is going to flex this front plate which hold the front lights so the more I think about it, the more that is the wrong solution for this. So I'm just trying to figure out if I can mount it uh, here without getting in the way for the bracket uh, that holds the, uh, the, the hood open. Um, it will basically sit at the same height, so that's not going to be an issue. Also, this is um, water has been drawn in and out. Uh, coolant has been drawn in and out of the tank uh, by heat, so it doesn't need to sit at a certain height it doesn't need to be the highest point in the system because that's still going to be the radiator cap um so not worried about that but just um yeah the stud on this uh, tank is wrong it needs to be in, on the other side so i guess i had to either weld this plug it somehow i'll just tap and drill another uh, another um, connection for the radiator but I think I want this to sit here also so I can access the um, the front lights and everything. Um, also now not have been rusted out anymore. There's really nothing to hide so it doesn't matter. And I don't really think it matters having it sitting like this. I think it's 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 actually you know quite pleasing for the eyes. And I think I'll be doing something similar for the um, washer reservoir over here. So. Change of plans, happens, um, new bracket, put it on here. I think that's gonna be a much better solution. So yeah, back to square one. Done with brackets. So this is how the engine bay lineup or layout is gonna be. Washer bottle over here. Easy to access, to see the level of. 
not clouding anything. Um, catch can, which goes right now just to the sump breather. Um, I have a plan on, that's why I, I got this one with the double uh, in fitting, to put it and root it to this one because it stinks in the car when you put on the um, the fan for the inside air. Um, so this is mounted up on a bracket here and it's done up on this uh, bulkhead front. So that's just, yeah, there. This is gonna be done up with uh, some um, vibration damping. Um, well, it's basically just uh, some hose I'm gonna cut and put on bolts and just have it sit on that. And this one over here, radiator overflow on bracket so you can access it from the engine bay before you had to remove a lot of things to get it off and um, down here on the back side made a little bracket for it here to fit on so all the bracketry is is done that's going to be the basic layout and now for yeah Trying to get this ready. I think I'm going to paint it before I'm going to start doing wiring. I don't know if that's the right order. I just feel I need to tidy and clean this up so I can uh, visualize it a little bit better on how I want to route the wires and have plugs and connectors and everything so that doesn't get in the way and it's easy accessible and easy to take off and all that kind of good stuff. But a mock-up done, um, all this stuff is going to be taken off now, and yeah. Oh. Just trying a few ideas on the new engine harness. Um, I need to put this, um, I'm gonna be making a relay box and fuse box somewhere. I actually wanted to have it inside the car because there's like, it doesn't make any sense to have it in the engine bay, but I've bought also these, um, yeah, sealed watertight um, relays. So, they're not gonna have the, the problems with moisture and stuff like that. Um, as the old ones, they just died on me. So I am actually thinking of mounting it somewhere like this. Almost here, flush, um, up against the, uh, the coolant uh, overflow tank. Um, that's also gonna fill up some of this space because I know I wanted like a clean engine bay and I can still like make that happen. Um, it will just have this little box sitting here and then I'll make a decal of sorts uh, to put on top um, with all the fuses and relays what goes where and I'll just hide the harness uh, down here um, so I think that will be also the plus um, the positive lead from the battery which comes around here around the front it will go to the starter first then I will go down uh, a gauge to the alternator and because the alternator will run 80 amps, something like that, back through, all the way back through the battery and uh, the starter is going to be pulling, I don't know, 200, 200 something amps um, for a short time. So I'm going to have a fuse back at the battery, uh, a fusible link. I have two of those. I actually have one for the for the fuel pump, which is uh, wired directly to the battery, um, a separate system, and then I'm gonna have the big uh, fusible relay. I think I'm gonna run a 140 amp. See if that's gonna be enough for the main. It's gonna go through the starter, alternator, and then a smaller gauge again to the fuse box, 
and from the fuse box to all the stuff I need inside the car. Um, I don't really think I'm gonna need that much. Two of those right now, these, the biggest ones, are actually from the old uh, alternator um, which runs to an amp meter inside the car, but I'm not like gonna have 80 amps uh, unfused going through the dash cluster. So that's gonna be uh, taken out. And I might even run, um, I have a small fuse box somewhere, run that inside the car and then just have one positive lead going in there. So everything just gets sorted. And the only thing that'll be coming out here is signal for um, low beam, high beam, uh, horn, washer, uh, what else we got? Wipers, I think that's just a, no, that's a three, four, five. No, that's a separate harness, sorry. This is it. Um, what else we got? Charge light, something like that. The rest is gonna be negatives. That's gonna be grounded in the engine bay. So hopefully that's gonna be it. Um, oh yeah, also a few sensor wires, like all pressure, what else we got? All pressure, all temperature. Um, is that really it? I think it is. Um, yeah, signal for starter and switched 12 volts for the um, alternator. That leaves me with, yeah, four. Oh no, two, three. Because these go to the um, transmission, transmission uh, reverse. Yeah, three wires I can take out. Wow, that cleaned it up. Not, but everything's gonna get sorted. Everything is gonna get changed out to new wiring, new connections, new relays, new fuses. Hopefully that will make the car run a lot smoother. I am thinking about doing another um, a new ignition coil um, and resistor because this one has been going for some years, I suspect. Maybe we can do the new wiring, do the new uh, DC assembly. Um, spark plugs and all that stuff was changed when I redid the engine. So, yeah, still a lot of work, but it's just a matter of just starting out and just, yeah, one wire at a time, suddenly you're done. Happy days. All right, guys, thanks for watching. In the next one, we're going to be digging into the power-assisted electric steering, uh, how to fit this uh, column from a 52-year uh, newer car. So remember to subscribe and uh, stick around for that one. See you!